Hey everyone, Saul from Three Kingdoms Games here. Coming to you today with some Throne of Eldraine news as well as my review of the trailer. Now, Throne of Eldraine is the next magic set. And as always, Wizards have started to release trailers for each magic set. These are usually related to their arena releases, but you know, paper magic players can watch them too. So, the Throne of Eldraine trailer was interesting. When they mentioned Grimm's Fairy Tales and Arthurian Legend, I was thinking they were going to do one thing very specifically. I thought they were going to go more in the Grim Dark range, because for those of you who have read Grimm's Fairy Tales, and I'm a huge fan of the Grimm's Fairy Tales, they're very dark, they're very twisted, they're to try to teach you some morals, and they don't really sugarcoat it in any way. Arthurian Legend, similar idea. You know, you have the high adventure, you have knights going on quests, things like that. Instead, they, I don't know what they gave me for that trailer. It felt like Shrek. They gave us this cute, like, gingerbread romance. Sorry, I'm struggling for my words because I'm actually kind of infuriated by this trailer because I wanted this grim, dark, with bright highlights kind of thing, which is what Arthurian legend is supposed to be. But instead, gingerbread love romance. I did not really care for it. I know there was a lot of ha moments for people. I did not find myself laughing at all during this trailer, which might speak more to me as a person than to this trailer's quality. But I did find it cool that in the background, you had these knights in this castle fighting Garuk. I wish I saw more of that. And then, end of the video, Garuk eats one of the cookies. And the other one stabs him in the back with a meat fork, it looks like. So if Garuk's defeat is a card with a cookie stabbing him in the back, I am cool with that. We are good. I will be okay with this video suddenly. But odds are, that is not what we're going to get. Now, Throne of Eldraine, like any other new standard magic set, comes with new mechanics. So I'm going to go over the three new mechanics of Throne of Eldraine now. Now, again, Wizards, I think you kind of dropped the ball on this next mechanic, but... Here it is anyways, Adventure. Now, Adventure cards are creature cards with built-in instants or sorceries. If you cast it as a creature from your hand, it goes onto the battlefield like anything else, as long as it resolves, obviously. If you cast it as an instant or sorcery, assuming it resolves, so if it's counterspelled, it goes to the graveyard like anything else. If it resolves after you've cast it as an instant or sorcery, it gets exiled. Instead of going to the graveyard, it is a replacement effect. It would not go to the graveyard at any point. You can then later cast this card from exile as the creature. Now, my big issue with this adventure mechanic is adventures are a huge part of fairy tales and of Arthurian legend. People go on these big quests, these big adventures, to essentially better themselves or they went out for one reason but they came back for another reason and now they're changed they have in some way improved themselves whether it's they're smarter faster stronger learned some great moral whatever the case may be they are changed the fact that it's the same creature coming back i wish it almost had and they've done it now in transformers where they've done triple face cards so i don't know why they couldn't bring a similar mechanic to magic I'm not talking about I want the folding cards and all that stuff. But this could have been a transform. If it was cast from exile, transform it. Pretty simple. I know it's more rules text being added in. But it would have added something to make these adventures feel worthwhile on sending these creatures on them. Because right now as it stands, the adventure mechanic pretty much seems like a weird rendition of Fuse. Where instead of one half and the other half, if you remember from Return to Ravnica, or you could cast it for both. It's you can cast it for both, but there's a one turn wait in between. Or you have to, you know, the extra step of it has to go to exile. Also, the adventure mechanics for the most part, people are going to use these cards for one half or the other. Rarely are you going to see cards used for both, at least from the adventures I've seen. Maybe Wizards is going to pull something out that changes that, but as it stands now, I think the adventure mechanic is kind of lackluster. Cool conceptually, but I think it, again, failed in practice, and I wish they did more with it. Like I said, transform or something. This 
add an extra step. I understand after the last Ravnica block, they want to kind of turn down the power level on standard because the power level on standard right now is actually pretty high. As well as they're trying to actively slow it down and move it away from multicolor to more of a monocolor or light splash format. But I think this could have had a lot more done with it. Now, the next mechanic is adamant. Adamant is to represent your slash to the cards devotion to one of the five kingdoms of Eldraine. Now, the five kingdoms of Eldraine correspond to the mono colors. So, you have loyalty, which is white. You have knowledge, which is blue. You have perseverance, which is black. You have red, which is courage. And you have strength, which is green. Now, interesting concept because trying to bring in the kingdom elements of Arthurian legend. The way adamant works is a card with adamant will have one set of abilities or if it's cast for using three mana of a matching color to it. So if it was in the case of this card, three red mana, you get the adamant effect. You get a different effect. Now, I think this is an interesting mechanic. I think it's great that Wizards is trying to reward monocolor players because right now in standard and other constructed format, monocolors don't really work well. My big issue is to make adamant three mana of that color means you now have to overcost most of the spells with adamant, kind of counteracting their usefulness. Now, I think in limited, these cards will be huge. In draft, things that can do four damage for three mana will be big. But in Constructed, I think it's too overcosted for what it is exactly. Now, the last mechanic is a new token artifact mechanic, and that is food. Now, these tokens do work similarly to the idea of like Ethereum cells or clue tokens where other cards will generate them. What food tokens do is for two mana, you tap it, you sack it, and you gain three life. Now this is great because this will stop a lot of really hard aggro strategies because gaining three life is the difference between winning or losing when it comes to those more hardcore aggro strategies like mono red and things like that. But again, I think for what you're getting, for what you have to pay, it's a little slow for a lot of constructed formats. So subsequently, again, this is going to be a mechanic that makes more of an impact than limited, which starts making more and more sense for the fact that these mechanics work the way they do when Wizards R&D has said outright, they don't think of eternal formats when they design these sets. There's more balancing them for draft than constructed. So all these mechanics work fantastically in draft or limited formats, but in a more constructed format, I think a lot of these mechanics will break down and they will see some play but like I said, for adventures, you're going to see one side or the other side used. For Adamant, maybe one or two of these creatures will find their way into decks. But I don't think you're going to see that many Adamant cards seeing regular constructed play. And again, food tokens, I think, will end up being regulated exclusively to either odd sideboard tech for aggro matchups or exclusively limited play. So there you have it. Those are my thoughts on the Throne of Eldrain trailer, mechanics everything. Tell me what you think in the comments below. What, am I right? Am I wrong? Do you like these mechanics? Do you think they could have been different? As always, you can follow us on all major social media. That's in the description box below. I'll see you next time.